Hi, and welcome to Unit 2.3. We're going to talk about the remainder and factor theorems. In order to really understand those theorems, you have to learn how to do long and synthetic division of polynomials. So for things first, let's recall how to do long division in general. Just in general, how do we do long division? So when you search the internet, hundreds of things really do show up. And here's just kind of a brief example from, I think, an elementary classroom or something like that. So it just kind of reminds you how long division works. However, we have to remember that long division is organic. And so the bigger thing to actually remember is what these parts are called. So the, the what's going to go on the outside, on the outside is what we call our divisor. What we are dividing into is what's the dividend. What our answer ends up being, what we are solving for is what we call the quotient. And if there's a number left over, then that's what we call the remainder. So to recall, you know, kind of how we do long division, I just briefly put an example up here. We know that seven can't fit into three, so we go ahead and move over. Seven can fit into 32, four times actually. So seven times four gets me 28. We subtract 32 minus 28, and we end up with a four down here, and I'm gonna bring that four right on down. So we end up with actually 44. How many times does seven go into 44? Approximately six times, because seven times six is 42. So we subtract 44 minus two, and we end up with a remainder down bottom. So that tells me my seven goes into 324 46 times with the remainder of two. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that long division and we're going to relate it to our polynomials. Here's the formal definition, yada, 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 yada. But really, I want you to just kind of move into how do we do this? So the very first thing we're going to do, we have this example right here. We're dividing this long polynomial up top by x minus 3. So I set it up with my little divider. I put x minus 3 on the outside. And the very first thing I want you all to pay attention to is what I have highlighted in green. We're just going to focus on those first terms. How many times does x go into 6x cubed? Well, you know, if you can't mentally see that, we can write that out. We can literally take 6x cubed and divide by x. Well, what am I left with? Those 6s are going to stay, so I still have a 6. But what am I left with here? How many 3s on top? 3. Or how many how many X's on top? Three. How many X's on bottom? One. So one of these is going to disappear, and this number I'm going to be left with two. So I know that my first term is going to be 6X squared. Then I take that value and I multiply throughout. We already know that that first one's going to give us back 6X cubed, but then I multiply this second part right here. 6 times negative 3 should give me negative 18. Then just add in that X squared. And then we do what we always do with long division. We subtract. But why did I put parentheses? Because it's not just one term anymore. We're going to have maybe multiple terms, usually two. And so if you're going to do this, you have to make sure you put in those parentheses so you distribute that negative. You distribute that subtraction and you don't drop up. You don't drop your signs, basically, is what I'm trying to remind you. So that's what that looks like. We distribute that negative. So if that negative comes over, we're going to cancel out this term. If this negative comes over, that turns it into a positive 18x. So negative 25 plus positive 18 should net me a negative 7. So all I'm going to do is just like long division, I drag down the next one. Then we focus on the first terms again. How many times does x go into negative 7x squared? Well, it goes in negative 7x times. Then I take that negative 7 and multiply it for the rest of my uh, little divisor. And so negative 7 times negative 3 should give me positive 21x. We put them in parentheses, put that negative, and distribute. That cancels this out, but 18 minus 21x should get me negative 3x, and I drag down the next term. We do it again. Look at those very first terms. How many times does x go into negative 3x? It goes in negative 3 times. Then I bring that negative 3, and I multiply here. Negative 3 times negative 3 gives me a positive 9. And there you have it in purple. If I put my negative on the outside and I distribute, this is going to cancel out. And guess what? So is this. So I actually have a remainder of 0. So that tells me this quotient right here is my end answer. But because we are talking about long division of polynomials, are we truly done? And I wish my animations had worked for this slide. I'm sorry that I overloaded you with all this information. So to kind of help... I'm going to erase all of this, so maybe, oh, I don't want to erase that, actually. Maybe it gives you a little bit better idea of what I'm talking about. So this is the original question, and this was the answer we received. So how can I write this original question? That tells me that what I divided into, my dividend, is really going to be what my divisor times the quotient. Isn't that how that works? Think about how multiplication works. So what I did next is I simply factored. We know how to factor. And then 
we do what we always do with those polynomials when we're solving for roots. We separate them out and set them equal to zero. So this was x minus three, two x minus three, and three x plus one. So just a reminder, you know, you finish with that long division, we finish with that synthetic division, but what we're trying to get to is finish the solve with, uh, finish the solve for our real zeros. Okay, here's a couple of you do's. I hope you take your opportunity to go through them. I'm gonna do the very first one. So you have one more example to kind of go through and the rest of them, I hope you pause. So the very first thing I'm gonna test, and I didn't mention this in the previous example, the very first thing I wanna make sure is my exponents are in order and they're in descending order. So it goes three, two, technically there's a one right here, technically there's a zero. So I'm good to go. We have an example later on where you're gonna see I need to put in a kind of like a placeholder and we'll do that. So I put my dividend in on the outside, I put my divisor and we start. So we look at that first term, how many times does x go into x cubed? It goes in x squared, so I multiply back, I get x cubed and I get six x squared. I make that whole thing negative. So this is gonna cancel out and seven minus six should give me simply a single x squared and I bring this down, it becomes four x. Then I look at the first term again, how many times does x go into x squared? Well, it goes in simply x times. So that becomes x squared. I take this and I multiply here again, that becomes plus six x, put the whole thing in parentheses and negative. So that's gonna cancel this out and that's gonna become negative six x. So four minus six is negative two x. And we bring this value down, negative 12. Then we ask ourselves how many times does x go into negative two x? Well, it goes in negative two times. So this becomes negative two x and minus 12. It may be looking good. Put those negatives and look at that. We end up with the remainder of zero. So I know that this up top, ignore that part, is gonna be equal to the part I just ignored, my divisor, times my quotient, which is this up top. So x squared plus x minus two. And then we take the time, of course, to factor. So we factor, then we set it equal to zero, and then you solve. So make sure you are finishing these solves. Get in that habit, focus and practice. Okay, here's one more example for you to pause and attempt. But here's another one that I would like to do with you guys. What happens when we have a remainder? So far our remainders have been zero, but let's look at an example where our remainder isn't zero. So I'm gonna put my division sign and then I'm gonna check my exponents. I see an exponent of three. I see an exponent of one. Technically there's an exponent of zero over here, but what's missing? My x squared. So I'm gonna put a placeholder when I come down here. Nine x cubed minus zero x squared uh, minus x minus three. I'm going to put my divisor, divisor, I don't know what I said, divisor out front. So how many times, look at those first terms, how many times does 3x go into 9x cubed? Well, it goes in 3, 3 times 3 is 9x squared times. So I bring that back and that becomes plus 6x squared, make that whole thing negative, cancel that out. And uh, this is simply zero plus negative six x, so it's negative six x squared, and bring this guy on down. We look at that first term again. Three goes into negative six, negative two times. X goes into x squared a single x time, so that becomes negative six x squared, and then I attach, I multiply this and this, and that becomes negative four x. I make that whole thing negative, so this is gonna cancel out. Negative and a negative is a positive, so negative x plus positive four x should give me a positive three x, and I bring this down, so minus three. Then we do, how many times does three go into three x? Well, it goes in one time, that one's pretty easy. So that's three x, and one times two is positive two, but we switch the signs, we change that. That's gonna cancel out. Negative three and negative two should give me negative five. Well, that's not a zero, that tells me I have a remainder. So what am I gonna do? I'm simply going to attach. So I'm going to attach my remainder over my divisor. Oh, I cannot spell with that, okay, divisor. I reached that time limit real quick. So that becomes, let's see if I can write it really quick. So that becomes, instead of this, it would say minus five over three X plus two. Okay, join me in our next video, yay!